I just want to give you a warning before watching this video. It contains spoilers. So if you don't want to have this movie spoiled for you, then just click off the video. There is your warning. Now let's get on with the review. I, anyone who, who could sit through this and for the most part enjoy this long drawn out boar fest, like I, what do you do for a living? I, I'm assuming you, you, you knit fucking sweaters for cats or something. I, I don't know. Hey guys, welcome to Happy Wax TV. Okay, I just want to say before we get into this movie, if you have trouble sleeping at night, if you're on medication for, for not falling asleep, or if you have to take like hypnotherapy or something to, to fall asleep at night, I, I found the cure. I have found the cure. I have ridden the world. Well, actually, Clayton Whitmer has uh, ridden the world of not being able to fall asleep anymore for people that suffer from that. Throw this fucking movie in the arbors, and I promise you, you will be asleep in the first 15 minutes of this fucking two hour long fucking movie. Two hours. If you thought my opening fucking segment was long and drawn out and boring, and you're sitting there going, just get the fuck on with it, Myron, let's go. <laughs> Listen, two hours, two hours. You have to sit through this fucking movie. I'm all for slow burns, okay, but there has to be some sort of a burn at the end of your slow burn to call it a slow burn. Because if there is no burn at the end of your slow burn movie, then it's just a fucking boring movie, which, <laughs> which this is. It's like slow burn. You know, you're having a cigarette or a, or a cigar, right? And you're taking it in. You've got that little burn at the end and someone just walks by and goes, boop, and puts your fucking cigarette. <laughs> That's the same feeling I had watching this movie. It was like, I figured it, listen, if you can't figure this movie out in the first 15 minutes as to what's going on, and I'll tell you something else too, a lot of people are going to be pissed off at this movie because they're going to be going into it thinking it's a fucking creature feature. Not just from the poster, but from the trailer as well. They sell it more or less like there's a fucking giant spider creature in this movie, which there is, but... <sighs> Oh boy, let me, let me read the synopsis and then we'll get into this. I had a bunch of people message me in the last day or so upon this movie's release asking me if I could talk about it, what I thought about it. There was a few people that said they couldn't figure out what was going on. Okay, well, I'm telling you straight up, I've got it in the thumbnail and I told you at the beginning, I'm going to talk spoilers here. Okay, so if you don't want to hear any spoilers for this movie and you want to go endure this this two hour fucking snooze fest, then, then go for it. Click the video off, go watch it and then come back and, and watch this. But let me, uh, let me read the synopsis set against a dreary. Okay. And dreary is the key word here because everything about this movie is fucking dreary. Even the color palettes, I'll, I'll give them that much. They wanted to make a depressing movie. Well, bravo, because you pulled it off, but set against the dreary small town, the Arbors follows Dean or sorry, Ethan Dwayne's a reclusive locksmith struggling to keep ties with his younger brother. Ethan, Ethan's life takes an unsettling turn after finding a strange, small creature and forming a mysterious connection. After a string of unexplained killings, unexplained. Listen, you can figure out what the fuck is going on here in the first 15 minutes. After the first murder, you know exactly what's going on here. But anyways... <laughs> After a string of unexplained killings, the creature's true nature is soon revealed, and Ethan finds himself at the center of panic and paranoia. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. All right, listen. Drew Matthews plays Ethan Dwayne's. Okay. He is the brother. His, his brother, played by Ryan Davenport, is, is Shane. Okay. 
In the first act, we, we learn that Ethan is like a, a lonely, depressed, almost like a, recru a, a recluse, okay? He really has no friends. He really does nothing. He sleeps all day, and then he's a, an on-call locksmith at night, okay? And he goes to his niece's birthday. He's late for it. But in this scene, in the first act of this birthday, we learn that Ethan is, is, he wants his past back. He wants his childhood back. From what I gathered, I think their father either left the family or passed away. I'm not sure, but their, their family home is still there in this small town. But Shane has his own house, and then Ethan rents this, this smaller place from somebody because they can't afford to buy this, their, their, you know, their parents' house back. But Ethan is desperate to get Shane back in his life because as, as they've gotten older, Shane has moved on. He's, he's obviously married now. He's got a, a, you know, a little girl and stuff like that. And they've kind of left Ethan you know, in the dust because he just, he's doing nothing with his life. He doesn't want to leave the town. He, he doesn't want, you know, he's not really educated. He's fucking a locksmith. And, he, and that's all he wants to do. He, he doesn't have much, much drive, okay? But he's desperate to get Shane back, okay? And they show this through a game piece that he brings over and gives Shane as a little present. And Shane really doesn't give two shits about it. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, this is what this movie's going to be about. Because earlier on in the first act, we see this creature. Ethan runs across, like, runs into this creature. It's, it's living inside a deer, okay? This little spider creature. So he captures it and takes it home with him, okay? And then it escapes after it bites him in the hand. All right, so, if listen, if you have no thought process, okay, you, you will think that for at least the first half of this movie, God, God help you if you can't figure it out after the first 45 minutes of this movie and these killings, these murders that are going on, if you still think that it's this spider creature, then... I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Maybe you want to call these guys to help you figure out this fucking mystery, okay? Because after the first fucking killing, you know, you know it's Ethan doing it. It's so, it's painfully obvious what is going on here, okay? He's killing everyone around him and everyone that is close to Shane so that he can get Shane back. So there's no one else in his life that is ever involved with Shane. Okay, so Ethan can have him back as his little brother, and then they can go on their merry way, and he can get his childhood back. That's what this fucking movie is, okay? <laughs> but it's just the way it's put forth. It's like, there was a couple times I thought to myself, am I watching a terribly written Jim Jarmuth movie? Like, it's that fucking slow. It is painfully fucking slow. So, and, and I feel sorry for the people that are going to go, because I was one of them that went into this thinking it was going to be like a monster movie or a, or a creature feature of some sort. And again, yes, there's a spider creature in here. But honestly, it, it really, like I get what he's, he's saying or he's trying to do, okay, the director. He's saying that every time, like Ethan is, is, is channeling through this creature that he sees or he thinks he sees because it's not really fucking there, right? And it's killing all these people when in fact it's Ethan killing all these fucking people. And there's no mystery here. I know they play it up thinking, oh, is there a creature or is there not a creature? There's no fucking creature. There isn't. It's painfully obvious there's no fucking creature. And the fact that they throw two scenes in with, with these, these uh, you know, the, the government fucking scientists that come in with the white Tyvek suits on and, you know, roaming around trying to find this space creature or whatever. The, it's painfully obvious that they're not there. Okay, because you, you, you just have to listen to what the town folks are saying. No one anywhere in this movie acknowledges that there's any government scientists in this small little town doing anything suspicious. Not once is it ever mission, mentioned. The only person who sees it is Ethan. Okay, which and it just gives it away. So, and every fucking scene is, is drawn out. It's two hours, two hours of this, and it's just, it's so fucking boring. And I, I, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll just keep going here. Okay, I'll keep going. I'll give this one a chance. Maybe, maybe something's going to happen in the last, oh, I don't know, half an hour of this movie. Nope. Okay, maybe in the last 20 minutes of this fuck. Nope. Maybe in the last 15. Nope. 
10? Nope. 5? No, it ended exactly how I fucking thought it was going to end. Oh, God. And it's so fucking boring getting there. And the, and the way these, these cops, like, this movie has some good to it, okay? If they would have sold it as, like, you know, more of him just losing his mind with no creature in it. I understand, again, what the creature is supposed to fucking represent, but they didn't need that in there. And again, you're going you're gonna to piss a lot of your audience off because most of them are going to go into this thinking it's going to be a fucking monster movie, and it's not. And then they're not going to accept the remaining hour and 45 minutes of this movie when they realize that, okay? And the people who, who, who enjoy this movie, okay, even though it's slow and dull and, for the most part, kind of poorly written. I mean, these are the stupidest police officers I've ever seen in my fucking life. Like everything, everything points to Ethan as the killer and these fucking dumbass cops can't fucking figure it out. <laughs> he gets questioned by a cop on the side of the road for like 30 seconds and then that's it. Like, holy fuck. <laughs> like he's burying bodies in his fucking, in the, in the basement garage or, his, or the floor of his garage to hide the bodies, you know, that this creature is supposedly killed. Well, I mean, this movie takes place over the course of like almost a month. Wouldn't, wouldn't you think they would start to, to, to smell a little bit? No one's going to pick that odor up? Oh, God. And then the phone calls he makes to the cell phones when he sees these dead bodies, like all the clues point to Ethan and these, these dumbass cops can't figure it out. Like, it's just, it's so fucking stupid. Oh, and then to drag it out for fucking two hours. All this movie is, is him walking around being depressed and mopey. And then somebody dies. And then it's more of him walking around being depressed and fucking mopey. And having these long, boring ass, drawn out fucking conversations with people. Most of them don't even need to be in the movie. And then somebody dies. And then more walking around being depressed. <laughs> Set behind a dreary fucking background. I'm like, come on. At least, at least tighten up the runtime. Like you could have shaved fucking, <laughs> you could have shaved 40 minutes off of this fucking movie. That may have helped. Jesus Christ. Anyways, I just gave you the movie. That's the end of it. Him and his brother get to be buddy buddies again. And they don't even do that because he killed his fucking wife and his kid. And now fucking his Shane, his brother's all depressed on his couch. End of movie. Oh, God. Anyways, to give it a rating, I, I would give this movie like a two. Maybe a three out of ten. If anyone, if anyone in the comment section says that they enjoyed this movie, okay, again, okay, if they would have went in as, as making this like a serial killer movie, more so, not, not pushing the fucking monster aspect to trick your audience into watching it, but if they would have, you know, if they would have went in serial killer, there's, there's, no, there's no fucking trickery here, okay, you know after the first 15 minutes, but I, anyone who, who could sit through this and for the most part enjoy this long, drawn-out bore fest. Like, I, what do you do for a living? I, I'm assuming you, you, you knit fucking sweaters for cats or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, don't know what... Oh, God. More people are going to be pissed off thinking it's a fucking creature feature. But anyways, okay. Much like this movie, I've, I've drawn this fucking review out way past its, its end point here. So I'm going to end it there. I'm going to give this movie a three, maybe a two. I don't know. It was fucking long and boring. God damn, you, you, you didn't fool any of us and to sell it as a monster movie or a creature feature and then turn it into this poorly written, drawn out Jim Jarmuth bore fest. I, I don't know. Anyways, it's called The Arbors. It's out now. Go watch it, please. Go, go watch this movie, okay? I, I almost promise you, you won't be able to finish it in one sitting, but go watch it and then come back here and let me know what you thought about it. Okay. 
Anyways, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> Listen, keep the requests coming in if you guys want me to watch a movie or something. I, I apologize, I have a ton of people asking me to watch movies. I only have so much time, so I'm trying to get through as many of them as I can to review them, as well as keep up on the new ones like this one. So, but just, just keep them coming up. Got a list going, so eventually I'll, I'll get to them and, and uh, yeah, we'll get there. But uh, this movie, man, holy shit. Anyways, until next time, guys, stay scared.